let us consider the mechanism, uh, which is actually pretty simple. I can show you directly. The first thing is, uh, if, I'm, if I'm using equals bromine, then who is the electrophile? Because the first step is involving an electrophile. So therefore, I have to determine which one is the electrophile, then which one can react with alkene in the first step. Now, involving uh, alkene, which is electron rich, so therefore, it reacts with an electrophile. And we have to consider between bromine and water, who is the one that can function as the electrophile? Bromine, remember, last week we have talked about it. When Br2, which is uh, essentially non-polar, but right, it doesn't function as the electrophile. But when it approaches the alkene perpendicular to the alkene, then the bromine, which is closer, the electron cloud will be pushed away. So this bromine, which is closer, will be delta plus. The other bromine will be delta minus. So the bromine, which is delta plus, can function as the electrophile. And we have to remember, when I say that bromine, it is the electrophile, don't think that the whole thing is the electrophile because it is not specific. If you look at the whole thing, the two bromine, the bromine is, which is closer is the one that is delta plus. The bromine that is further away is the one that is delta minus. Who is the electrophile? Is it this Br minus? No. Uh. This guy is negative charge. It doesn't function as the electrophile. This bromine, which is delta positive charge, it is the electrophile. So we need to identify the actual atom or the actual part of the species that is either the electrophile or nucleophile. So later when you draw the arrow pushing, you know exactly where the arrow should draw from where to where. If I know that this guy, it is a plus, this guy, it is a minus. Later when I draw the arrow pushing to represent the movement of the electron, I know that the electrons will go to Br plus, it will not go to Br minus, all right? So we have to be uh, very specific in terms of who is the one that is the electrophile, which is the specific guy that is the electrophile, which is the specific guy that is the nucleophile. Now, if I compare oxygen, if I consider oxygen, because the product that we have is BrOH, effectively we're comparing carbon bromine bond and carbon oxygen bond. So I just need to compare between bromine and oxygen. And for oxygen in water, obviously it is uh, more electronegative than hydrogen. Oxygen, it is always a partial minus charge. It is a nucleophile. It will never react with alkene in the first step because this guy is nucleophile. Alkene is also a nucleophile. They don't like each other. Uh, keep in mind, hydrogen in water is relatively stable. It doesn't function as a nucleophile. Uh, electrophile, I mean, uh, the hydrogen is positive, yes, but it is relatively stable, so it doesn't function as the electrophile. I think this is the easiest way for us to consider that involving uh, hydrogen in water. Okay, so the first step will therefore be uh, this, which is uh, something very similar to what we have involving uh, normal reaction with Br2, you draw the alkene, <clears throat> then you draw the bromine perpendicular to my alkene. Bromine, which is closer, is a delta plus. The one that is further away is a delta minus. When you draw the arrow point from the double bond to my Br delta plus, point to my bromine delta plus, bromine bromine bond breaks, both electrons go to Br minus. So we will end up with something like this. Again, my alkene is symmetrical. So therefore, where the bromine goes to, it doesn't really matter. Let me draw the bromine to the left-hand side. Carbon on the right-hand side, it is a plus. Then you have this Br minus. So this would be step number one. Now, involving step number two, how do I show my BROH? And how do I show the product, which is involving BrBr? -Br? Now, BrBr -Br is obvious, right? Because this guy is a plus. This, uh, this guy, carbon, is a plus. This Br is a minus. Then the minus will just join to the plus. This would be one of the reaction. Uh, but uh, what we want to talk about is involving the uh, water, all right? Uh, because now my intermediate is this carbocation ion, uh, positively charged, then all the things that are nucleophilic negative charge can join to my C plus and form my product. So water, oxygen in water can come in, and then eventually it gives me the major product. The bromine, uh, which is formed at the end of the first step, can go in then this will give me my Br, Br. So what is interesting is how come water is more likely to go in? Uh? Because if I consider the charge of the species, oxygen, in water, it is only a partial minus charge. Bromide is a minus one charge. So this is a minus one charge. This is a partial minus charge. So how come this guy, which is more negatively charged, is not more likely to attack the C plus? This guy should be more reactive. Now, the reason why water is more likely to attack this guy is because 
um, it is a solvent. That means there's a lot of water. So you we win in terms by the quantity. La, huh? The reactivity is less reactive than bromine, but because water is the solvent, you have a lot of water. So therefore, the uh, this carbocation ion is virtually just surrounded by water. So the probability of water attacking the carbocation ion is much higher than the probability of Br minus attacking the carbocation ion. So this is the reason why BROH eventually will be the major product. But in this case, we still want to draw both steps to show how your BROH is formed and how your BRBR is formed. BRBR is easy. BROH, uh, let us uh, talk about it. Let me show you the steps. Now involving 2A, uh, your water will come in, attack the C+. Plus. Again, we draw the lone pair on oxygen, point from lone pair to carbon. This is supposedly the first step. First step, forming the carbocation is slow. Then I'll have something like this. This oxygen will be bonded to carbon and to hydrogen. And the positive charge will be transferred to oxygen. Now the idea is actually uh, quite simple. How come now the positive charge is on oxygen is carbon originally it is positively charged. And it doesn't like to be positive charged, right? So it says that, hey, somebody give me electron. Uh, uh, I don't want to be positive charge. So oxygen will pass the electron to carbon. And therefore, the charge will be transferred from carbon to oxygen. Because oxygen gives the electron to carbon, then now carbon becomes neutral. The positive charge will be transferred to oxygen. Now if it is with oxygen, uh, oxygen also don't like to be positive charge. So now oxygen is the one that says that, hey, I don't like to be positive charge. Somebody please give me electron. So who is the one that will give electron to oxygen? Hydrogen. Uh, because hydrogen don't mind being plus charge. H can be happily being a H plus, no problem. So hydrogen will break the uh, OH bond. Both electrons will go back to oxygen. And then we will kick this out as a H plus. Now this is what we call a deprotonation. It's just a fancy term of removing H plus. This is the simpler version of it. Some schools, when they draw this mechanism, they will draw water at the side and they will draw oxygen in water acting as a nucleophile to attack the positive hydrogen. Then the product here, instead of H+, plus, we get a H3O+. Plus. That one is a more complete mechanism, but I think for appreciation, we, don't, we do not really need that. Huh? We just draw something simpler. I think it is good enough. Water goes in, then later you break the OH bond, kick out H+, plus, then we will get this product, BROH. Remember the chances of water going in is higher because water, it is the solvent. So therefore, this process is more likely to occur. Uh, 2B is super easy. It's involving Br minus joined to C plus, then you get a Br, Br, finish. So very, very straightforward. And I think what is interesting and what we want to appreciate uh, is involving mechanism. Mechanism is not just about, oh, you know, just memorize, uh, step number one is what, which one is fast, which one is slow, then arrow pushing point from where to where. It's, it's, it's actually not only about that. Uh, we understand the mechanism, and if I understand the mechanism, then we can actually do predictions in terms of uh, why this is formed. Can this product become, uh, be formed or not? What are the things that are possible? What are the things that are not possible? So we can use the mechanism to predict products or predict the reactions. And I think in itself, this idea is very, very uh, important uh, because um, it is a very powerful way for me to predict whether certain reactions are possible or certain reactions are not possible. So therefore, something very uh, fundamental, but uh, it is good to run through this idea again. We have to remember that even though electrophilic addition is like super easy, only two steps, please remember the two groups that are attached to my alkene after addition reaction, they go in as different things. Step number one must be involving an electrophile, positive electrophile. Step number two must be involving a nucleophile because I form a carbocation. So therefore, if it is positively charged, it must be reacting with something which is a minus charge. So remember, my electrophile goes in in the first step. Nucleophile goes in in the second step. It must be one plus, one minus. Cannot be two pluses, cannot be two minuses. So therefore, based on this very simple idea, again, it seems very trivial. Huh? You tell me one plus one minus, so what's the big deal? Uh, because I need to know that the two groups that are added to my alkene, 
One is a electrophile goes in as an electrophile in the first step. One goes in as a nucleophile in the second step. And therefore, I can predict what are the products that are possible and they are not possible. I can form BROH, no problem. The electrophile from bromine, the oxygen nucleophile from water. I can form BR, BR, no problem. Because this BR minus comes from the product of the first step involving bromination, it is not possible for me to form OH, OH. If I'm using aqueous bromine, because both oxygens are nucleophilic, negative charge, I can never join my oxygen to my alkene in the first step because the charge is a minus charge. If it is both minus, I cannot form, uh, I cannot add two negative species to alkene. This is not possible. So again, uh, with some basic understanding involving the mechanism, then I can predict whether certain things are possible, whether certain things are not possible. 